welcome to another Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday. Today, we're going to look at the 50th anniversary edition of Nuclear War Card Game. Award-winning, fast-paced, and often everyone loses. Now, why am I looking at this on a Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday? Well, this has some Sci-Fi themes, but you know what, what really gives us some street credibility when it says award-winning well, th there are several games or related games in this line, and one of them was Nuclear Escalation, which won for Best Sci-Fi Board Game in 1983. And it won that from the Charles S. Roberts Awards. Now, on a related note, the Charles S. Roberts Awards are now live for the 2021 year, and it is a process that is completely open to nominations. So please get out there. I'll, I'll leave a link in my um, down below, but get out there and submit your nominations for the various categories that they have. They've been reduced this year, but there's still quite a few categories. Submit your nominations because the process is really dependent upon you all to go out there and put the games that you think deserve the awards for those categories. So again, anyway, there's a link down below. So Nuclear Escalation won the Best Sci-Fi Award in 1983, and I think that's when I got that copy of Nuclear Escalation. I, I played Nuclear Escalation and uh, Nuclear Proliferation uh, back in the day, and uh, Nuclear Escalation I think I got from a local game store when I was in college. So, But they both come from Nuclear War. They come from this same system, Nuclear War, which celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, this this copy, I think, came out a, f uh, a couple years ago. I, I actually got this copy from uh, f uh, Flying Buffalo Games. They, a uh, little bit of a story there, Flying Buffalo was purchased by uh, a company that makes the, I think it's like Webbed Spear, uh, and they make the Aegis counter trays, the, the latest, those counter trays that everybody's kind of talking about in the wargaming industry uh, that are coming out, uh, hopefully to fill a need, uh, given that there's a lack of the old GMT trays right now. But um, the, the company that makes those purchased Flying, uh, Flying Buffalo in 2021. And so... Uh, uh, Dan uh, Picaldi of Knowing Me's Here was doing an interview with them and uh, I was was a live one and I kind of chimed in and ended up having a contact with them and they sent me uh, this copy so I want to thank them for that uh, I, I, I like to try out their trays too uh, everybody else seems to be trying them out but um, the uh, sent me this copy so really want to thank them for that uh, and it, it's kind of it's weird because uh, the, when I when they were doing that interview and I was talking about this uh, game on the um, on that live stream, well, that was the same time I was doing my nuclear war segment, and so I'll put a link to that down below too. I did a, a segment for No Enemies Here, and one of my Kilroy goes off the shelf, so you can check that out as well. But uh, uh, Flying Buffalo was is very, you know, arguably started kind of the one of the first to really start uh, the play by mail. Uh, systems and was kind of a leader in that uh, and have a long history and now they're uh, owned I, I don't know if they own all the games but this new web spear who is doing the Aegis trays now own own flying buffalo as well so it'd be interesting to see if they're going to continue on with some of these these games but nuclear war um, you know, this is very much there's the back of the box this is very much, you know, kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek type game, a, a satire on the, you know, threat of nuclear war that uh, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, uh, well, 60s as well, but uh, you, there, there was this uh, looming threat of nuclear war and doom and gloom, and, and so this game kind of took that and turned it into, into a game. So, uh, as you can see here, it's not really meant to be taken too seriously, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Let's get into the game here. It's a little bit hard getting into the, getting into the, I'm tearing into this bad boy here today. So, uh, love to know your all thoughts on this. Have anybody played this game? Did you play it back in the day? Was this too silly for you? I mean, it was a nice little 
filler uh, played in the dorm room with my uh, my roommate. Uh, so it's two to eight players. And the 50th anniversary, you can see here, is from uh, 1965 to 2015. So I guess this edition you know, is a few years old. But what you're going to get in here, you're going to get... Um, it's mainly it's a card game, so you're going to get your cards here. We'll take a look at those, because that's really the uh, uh, basis of the game. we got a little spinner here. Kind of interesting. I wonder if there's a little spinner wheel here. The other, uh, uh, the other ones didn't have a spinner. For those who don't like spinners, you can use dice. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Then we have... Uh, here are your, there's the back of the spinner right there. Here are your, um, basically your, your home countries or the places where you're going to be putting down, playing your cards. So pretty good stock there. Um, again, I don't know, this is the 15th anniversary, so I don't know what came in the original. I just have nuclear escalation, nuclear proliferation were the two that I played. This is where you're going to be putting your cards, and then uh, there's deterrent force. Uh, can, you, can, you kind of push out there for a bluffing or, or to keep people away from you, uh, from attacking you, and then you've got population, which is the kind of the way you win the game is by destroying the other side's population. Here are the rules. I mean, this is a relatively simple card game, so you're talking about four pages of rules, black and white, dual column, and just in paragraphed form here. There we go, nuclear escalation, nuclear proliferation, weapons of mass destruction. So as I said, I've got those two when they when they came out. That uh, nuclear escalation, I don't know if that was, uh, if I got, the, I, I didn't get that, I got, I uh, didn't get that in 83, but I don't know if that was an 83 printing or not. Anyway, so there's the rules, relatively simple. Let's get to some of the cards here and see what uh, what we uh, have inside here. So basically, the 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 gist of this game is you're going to be taking um, and getting. Uh, it's kind of cool. Just a three decks. These three decks you could take. Oh, so there's your inventory. So these are the different uh, missiles. So that t it tells you which missiles you have or, or, or weapons delivery or missile delivery systems. Like the B it carries 50 megatons, carries 100 megatons. So you're going to take all these. These are um, the different delivery systems that you have to get. Again, it's a card game. So you're going to be trying to get these delivery systems. And then there, there's some anti-missiles here, some intercept missile, some special cards. Top secret. You know, he's got a germ warfare. Um, but you're basically going to be getting these, uh, um, these missiles and trying to match them up with a warhead. Let's see if I can get this open here. The, um, so you match these up. Here's the warhead deck. So you're going to match these up with the warhead. So you got to match up. Like this, this can carry 50 megatons, so won't be able to carry that one, but you'll be able to carry that one. So you, you can put, a, you match up a, a delivery system with a warhead, right? And then that, then you launch it, and then this tells you what you, what the effect of it is. This destroys 10 million. So 100 megaton destroys 25 million. So yeah, this is really grim. If you if you sit down and think about this for what's really going on, it's you don't want to play this. This might fall into those um, ungameables that we did a segment with uh, No Enemies Here and Ardwolf's Lair not too long ago. Then there's propaganda cards or like special cards that you can get people to defect over to your side without having to use mega tonnage. So there's different ways to get the population over. And then you've got the poppy population deck here, which, uh, let's see, get this open here. Well, there's little, huh, there's little things here. I didn't even see that on that one. So you got your population deck here. And um, 
what this is, this is the Hemi people. So like that one warhead there destroys 3 million. Well, this is basically your victory points or currency in the game. It's kind of grim, isn't it? So you would lose, you know, two and one, you'd lose 3 million people. And so you keep playing and then um, whoever has, I think it's whoever has the most people left or whoever has, whoever has destroyed the most people. I can't remember. I have to look at, it's been a while since I played this uh, series. But whoever has the most at the end of the day are going to win or whoever has most po more population. So there you have it. So it's all about the you know, delivery systems, uh, warheads, and then this is the result on that. Um, and I said there's some special cards that let you do some stuff, you know, between intercepting missiles or how you lay out your your missiles or, or delivery systems or... Uh, taking population without having to, destroying population without using these or, or moving population over to your side. So that's basically the game. That's uh, that's how you play it out. Uh, the spinner's kind of different here. I haven't, uh, didn't, the other ones did not have one or did not need one or did not use one. So I think that's how we put that in there. I'll have to figure that one out later, how you put this little thing together there. Interesting. So um, that is what you get in a box of nuclear war, uh, which you know is. It looks like from that order sheet there, you can go, you can still go get nuclear escalation, or even nuclear proliferation. Uh, these were like real thinner boxes here, but these were produced in the in the 80s uh, and 90s. But uh, there you have it. That is uh, Nuclear War 50th Anniversary uh, on this Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday. A little walk down memory lane. Um, so love to know if, if any of you ever played this, what you think about this. Uh, I'll put some links to my nuclear video. I'll put some links to the Charles S. Roberts. Uh, so you know, get out there and, and, and put out your nominations. You really need those. And uh, love to hear your thoughts on any of this stuff. Anyway, and again, big thanks to the people at um, WebSphere or Flying Buffalo Games, whichever uh, is the game company now that provided me with this copy. I uh, want to thank you for that. So anyway, uh, I'll play this with <laughs> with one of my kids and see what they, what they think about this. Anyway, uh, have a great rest of your day and... Hey, enjoy some sunshine. I got a little bit going on here. Thanks for watching.